The Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead is in Mexico. You're actually in a back garden of me, my house in Ireland. Casual, an American looking at the Financial Times, but actually all the way back over to Mexico, looking at Mexican design in an article by House and Home editors. Victoria Mall has a look at the Day of the Dead, which happened on November 1st and 2nd in Mexico. Vibrant colors, ornamentation, epitomizing Mexican style. Really like this kind of a look. I teach at the Limerick School of Art and Design, so that kind of stuff's important. Now here's something else that's important. If you want to make money from arts, you want to be inside this section of the pink pages where fittings are important for homes. This keeps coming up. Like the Quaker or the Trifo Triflo Quadro, which is a really hot water, 98 centigrade is what that one can produce. Hot stuff on the front page of the FT weekend about the US election. Subhead says it best. Attacks, polls, and jobs data. And, you know, if you're going to take a bet, like a lot of people are, on which way the election is going to go, it's probably going to go down the pathway of money. Slow but steady economic recovery is what the numbers say. It's up to Obama to make sure people see and hear that in the, the last sort of wing states. They get all the, all the buckets of money for advertisement. Fresh fears about the outbreak of ash disease. I wonder, can the Saad show help us get an, get an edge? Because in, in, um, in England... In Kent, southeast part of the, of the UK, concerns are growing of whether it's going to be even possible to stop millions of the country's ash trees from being wiped out. Bill Clark does the correspondence. Uh, she's the environmental correspondent, and she does the, the write-up of it. There's no known treatment for ash dieback once uh, the tree's infected. Here in Ireland, we use ash for hurling. God, if you don't have ash, you've got no hurling. Inside, glimmer of hope on the economy. The U.S. election gets a lot of coverage in the FT. Robin Harding points out what's on the front page. Non-farm payroll figures confirm the labor market slowly increasing its, uh, its recovery. Statistics geek drawing Republican vitriol by putting the enemy ahead. Anna Fifield looks at Nate Silver. He writes the New York Times 538 blog, consistently showing the presence in the lead for the New York election. A.J. McKee, if you're watching this, you know what I mean. Stats rule, don't they? You know, predict, predictive stats, especially stats which show what's going to happen to an election or to a product. Statistically, there's some other stuff here in the FT. We'll get to that shortly. The campaign, Christopher Caldwell says, has sucked hope out of the U.S. public. I've watched this from afar. I'm an expat here in Ireland. It has made structural problems of the U.S. economic and social life look even less tractable than they did a few months ago. The idea is both candidates are ignoring that it's the unsustainability of the U.S. budget. We're looking at trillion-dollar deficits. It's going to affect the entire world. And the middle class, the working middle class of the United States. I mean, if you're in the middle class of the U.S., and I know guys who are listening to me are, geez, you're just you're, you're ahead if you don't get behind. I mean, eh, it's hard. It's really hard. Good luck, man, here. This is a, a look at George Lucas. He did a tremendous deal with Disney. Disney purchased Lucas Films. Uh, I just followed his stuff from the beginning. He got seven, seven Oscars, five spinoffs. Disney's got all kinds of production uh, with what they're going to do with the Star Wars uh, franchise. He had to give up. Lucas had to give up his uh, director's fee. Instead, took a 40% fee from the box office take and 40% of the ownership of merchandising and sequel. Quite cool. He had to do it that way to get the film out. I'll tell you what, though. Really, uh, I'm a Star Wars kind of guy. And I hope they remake it in a, in a fun way. Okay. Front page of the FT, the day it happened. Jamie Smith's got the story about the Irish courts jailing a former billionaire, Sean Quinn, for contempt over his assets. Sean's in jail now. Billionaire. Going bust. Well, actually, he's got a lot of property in Russia, which is probably going to be hard for the receivers to get their hands on. So I don't know whether he's really going bust. I think, um, and the country here has got some really interesting advocates for his position, saying, you know, he was walked into a corner by an illegal move. Hey, walked into a corner, Tim Bradshaw, Richard Waters says, if you have something where people queue up like they do for Apple gear and... Something like the iPad Mini doesn't get great fanfare and doesn't get great launches, then it might not actually hit the mark. So, iPad Mini sales need to top the three million first weekend sales of the iPad 3 to show people, the analysts who buy the stock, there's actually a market for it. Apple stock's down right now, so I don't think it hit the numbers. Facebook's having problems over their engineers. 
basically now Facebook's a proper company. The engineers are taking flight. I used to work at Facebook, says one hire after another at a lot of these uh, scobalizer meetings. Why? Because it's a normal process. They often decamp, go for smaller ventures with new challenges and better equity packages. Mark Zuckerberg's reacting to that, saying, look, you know, we're trying to make it up to the guys who are coming in and losing share of the valuations going down. But the fact of the matter is, smart people want to work for smart people, and, well, maybe you want to go to Dropbox instead of Facebook. Finally, if you're going to do that, then maybe you should use social media to enhance your executive career. This is a plug for the social media workshop at FT.com. We're looking at doing the same kind of thing where I work at LIT.ie. I'll give you a shot of the last red roses of the season. I encourage you to look at my Flickr.com stroke Irish eyes for more of these lovely photos. And follow me on Audible.com stroke Top Gold if you want to hear me throughout the week. I'm Bernie. I'm Top Gold. Thanks for listening to my Sunday news round from my back garden. Bye for now.